Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I've got a general question for you. Where do you save your files? Any particular folder on your computer? Or are you one of those who constantly forgets to save their files and then loses all that hard work every time you press the power button because you think that's how you shut off your computer. By the way, that's not how you shut off your computer. In some cases you could be suspending it, in other cases you actually could be damaging it beyond repair. Bottom line is, I want to know how you guys save your files, where you save your files. Ponzi likes saving all her files at the desktop, which I've got to tell you is pretty smart because she knows where they're at instead of being buried inside of some folder that she's never going to remember how to get to. I've got a top five list here from Nicholas, and he wanted to send along five tips on how to save files, according to him, properly. One, always finish a file you save with 001, so that if you modify it or create another file that is similar, you can save it as 002, and so forth. So he's creating a revisioning system, which is kind of nice. In fact, there's some software out there that will build in that type of system without you even knowing. This type of software that I'm talking about is specifically Google Docs. I realize that you think I love Google. Okay, so I do love Google Docs. I admit it. I've posted a couple of uh, blog posts on their official Google Docs blog, but I'm saying you can automatically save incrementally and then roll back to a, an earlier version even after navigating away from that particular Google document, of course, on Google's website. Number two, always save your file in the right folder. Now, this is where it gets interesting for me. Especially if you're working on a computer project like a website, you should save all the files in one folder. Subfolders are always good ideas too. Uh, I can't disagree with this, but I can tell you the advent of desktop search tools has eliminated a lot of need for this type of organization. Personally, I am totally with Nicholas on this one. I organize by folder, I name, you know, each particular project has a separate folder, but then you have some files that are parts of multiple projects. Well, the idea of desktop search tools is that you can put them anywhere, and as long as you name them something, or it contains content that you know how to get back to at any point in time when you're looking for it, then you'll be able to find it, so long as the tool is good. There are many desktop search tools that if you don't already have them, you can download. My favorite for Windows, by far, by far, better than the one that it ships with, either Vista or XP, Copernic. You can get it for free, the Copernic desktop search tool at, I, I'm pretty sure, copernic.com. Uh, been using it for years. Ponzi loves it. Uh, I love it. Um, on, of course, OS X, I use Spotlight, which is absolutely amazing. I love it as a desktop search tool. And everything else is kind of like, eh. It's okay. Those are the two desktop search tools that I would recommend certainly for uh, either OS 10 or Windows. And I think Linux, at least certain distributions, if you didn't download it on top of it, I think Beagle is the name of the desktop search tool, at least in GNOME. It's been a while. You'll have to pardon me. I'm a little rusty on that. Number three, no matter what you're doing, save often. For fast saving, use Control S to save a file. That's very true. Uh, if you have the opportunity to dive into the options for, let's say, whatever file editor you use. And you, what is a file? A file is anything that you're creating, viewing, editing, like a Word document, uh, a spreadsheet, a presentation, a, a graphic, uh, anything that you are creating or modifying. That is creating something else. That is that file. The file is edited in the program. And in some cases, the program will have the option to set autosave increments. If you're asking me what the, the best increment to set it as, uh, I always go with three minutes. Some of them default to five minutes, some default to 10. I'm a three minute kind of guy, you know, because you never really know what's going to happen. And there are times when these programs will crash. And if you're auto saving as you go along, then you don't have to think about it. Of course, when you exit the program, if it's a good program, it will remind you to save. Uh, number four, back up important files. If the file you're working on is very important and you don't want to get lost or just to be safe in general, copy your file onto an external hard drive or flash drive. Or if it's possible, put it on a website like Google Docs. Or maybe you've got a free web account somewhere where you can upload your files to. Great places to put files. Um, I mean, it, of course, 
I'd be careful if, if these are intended to be private files, but certainly back it up off-site. Number five, always save the correct file type. For example, if you make a simple Photoshop image that doesn't have much shading or excessive detail, save it as a JPEG or a ping, uh, rather than something that's much chunkier, like a potentially an uncompressed TIFF. These are graphics formats. Basically what he's saying here is keep in mind what you're going to be using that file for at some point in the future. If it's just a simple screenshot, you could save it as a, a ping. Uh, if it's something that you want to use as a desktop wallpaper, uh, at some point in the future, then you want a high quality image. Again, I'd say ping. In some cases you may want to save it as a JPEG, but the last thing you want to do is say, take, I was looking for my digital camera, but I think I packed it away. Taking a JPEG file and then saving it out at uh, a higher, uh, well, saving it out like as a, well, a ping in this, in this case, it would be much, much larger and you really wouldn't necessarily be getting the full quality out of that different file format. I'm sure that made absolutely no sense. I think the bottom line is, is keep in mind what you're going to be using that file for. And there are some times that you're going to want to save it as one version versus another. Okay, so to use a, another example, uh, if you're editing uh, a, a document and you know all you're doing is just type, 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 some text, it doesn't need to be fancy, but then you're sending it to somebody else and you don't know what uh, computer they've got, you don't know what software they have, you want to save it in, uh, in a format that you know they're going to be able to read. You could possibly use RTF, uh, rich text format, and that would allow them to pretty much get everything that you created and view it with virtually no issues whatsoever. Or you may use something like Google Docs where they don't have to install anything and they could just view it on the web. It's easier to manage. I'm sorry, not every, Google doesn't do everything certainly, uh, but for, for images in general, uh, you could go with any image hosting service. Uh, you know, the, the bottom line is, uh, keep in mind what you're doing uh, and, and how this potentially works. And even if you don't care, the more you know about this, the better you are going to be able to avert disaster should it happen at any point in the future. The biggest thing that I've known uh, or seen specifically from people that don't know a lot about this stuff, even file saving, which for people who understand what's going on kind of take for granted, a lot of people think the program is the file. It's not true, or that the file is the program, and they're really two things all together. The program, again, as I mentioned before, allows you to create or edit files, but that file lives independent of that program. So that means you can take that file and you can send it around. You wouldn't send someone the program, that's kind of pointless. You would send someone the file that you created in the program. So uh, hopefully I dovetailed it there with that newbie tip, and uh, you are a wiser person for it. Uh, if you've got any other suggestions or if you could explain that whole graphics saving thing that I tried my best to explain, if you think you can do it better, feel free. Be my guest. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. My email address is chris at perlo.com. Of course, you're also welcome to leave follow-up comments or responses uh, here in line with this video in some uh, way, shape, or form. You're also welcome to swing by the uh, website where we pretty much uh, are talking tech all the time, uh, tips and tricks, and you know, these, these are handy hints, especially if you need to help someone else figure out what they're going to do with this stuff. I like helping people that don't really know what's going on, and I like talking to other people who do know what's going on. Either way, you're both invited to the chat room. It's open right now at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.